Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today, I figured we're going to do my uh, December morning tea and see. It's 50 degrees here right now. It is very mild, um, almost kind of muggy to tell you the truth. And I don't know, it's two days after Christmas. So I figured this is the best time to do my uh, December morning TNC, kind of show you what I've worked with or what I brought in for December, um, including some gifts that were bought for me for obviously the holiday. I've got some crystals to look at. There's a bunch of decks to go over. So I'm going to get started on all that. My deck uh, amount that I brought in was actually pretty modest for December, I feel. Maybe not. I mean, it all depends on what you feel is modest, right? Like, that's all a personal, it's a personal thing. Um, but this is one, two, three, seven decks, which, I mean, some might think that's a lot. Some might think that that's nothing at all. Um, two of them were presents. One of them I got in November, and I'm going to do an update on what happened with it. So, I mean, really, at the end of the day, it is what it is, right? Um, yeah, so I'm going to start out with the update. So if you watched any of my previous videos, you would have heard about my Herb Crafter Tarot situation. So I ended up purchasing this Herb Crafter Tarot from Amazon. It was one of their warehouse deals. I actually have never seen, like, it's not too common that you see, like, a deck in the warehouse deals. So I was a little, like, whoa, like, that's crazy. Um, I was hesitant to get it, but it has been on my list for a while. It just hasn't been at the top of my list. And when I got the opportunity to grab it for really cheap, I did. Um, and the reason why I was hesitant is because I was kind of like, well, why is it in the warehouse deal? It said that it was in perfect shape and condition that just the plastic had been removed from the box. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot for 20 bucks. I'll try her out. Well, it showed up in absolutely pristine, perfect shape other than it was missing a card. And if any of you guys recall, that card was the five of wands. And here it is. So I was so brokenhearted because I don't know, it's weird to have a deck with one card missing. So I had written US games and said that I got a deck and it was missing a card. And I was wondering if they like if I could buy a card from them, if they even did something like that. The guy ended up reaching out to me and I told him what card it was. He asked what card it was, what my address was, all of that stuff, told him, and then our conversations went completely dead. And I didn't hear anything from anyone for weeks. And so I kind of thought to myself, maybe, like maybe it got lost in translation. Maybe I ended up in like the junk file of his computer or whatever. So I sent one more email where I included all the information that he had previously asked for and and I didn't get anything and I was like all right well I didn't receive any reply nothing maybe they don't do it I know US games doesn't ship to Canada um other than if it's for wholesale right so I was kind of down in the dumps and I was like shit like I have this deck and I have no idea what I'm going to do with it I'm literally missing one card and yeah, I could do the shady thing of like purchasing a deck, bringing it here, putting the one card in and then returning it and saying like the one card was missing. Um, but I just, I didn't really want to go that way because I feel like that's kind of bad juju, especially when it's a deck that you want to keep for yourself. So I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so I, the day before Christmas, Christmas Eve, we ended up going to, maybe it wasn't Christmas Eve, maybe it was the day before Christmas Eve. I don't know, it was either the day before Christmas Eve or right on Christmas Eve. We ended up going to the post office and there was a lovely letter in my mailbox. And the minute I saw US Games, I was like, oh my God, 
get out. Like, get out. They actually sent it to me. They didn't charge me for it. They didn't do nothing. Like, they just sent me the card. And I was like, oh, my God. They threw a bookmark in with it. Like, they gave me a bookmark. Like, how freaking cool is that? Um, the Glow and Dark Tarot, which I didn't even know existed. And when I saw this, I was like, well, that's really cool. Especially when you live in a really shady, um, dark, gloomy church, right? So I live in a 120-plus-year-old decommissioned church. Me and my husband bought it in 2019. And it is very shadowy in here. Um, it's the stained glass windows. It causes a lot of shadow. Um, the windows are a little... There's a lot of windows. It's just they're kind of smaller windows in a way. Um, but there's just, there's a lot of, um, it's dark. It's kind of dark in here and shadowy. So it's kind of hard to sometimes see things. Um, having enough light always is like my number one obstacle when it comes to filming things, taking pictures, doing things. So a glow in the dark tarot <laughs> would actually be really freaking cool. And I think this bookmark glows in the dark. It, to me, it looks like it does. So I have to put it out in a windowsill and charge it up and see if it glows. But like to me, it looks like this might glow in the dark. So we'll see. So this was in there. This was in there. And then there was another big postcard. I'll go grab it. I didn't grab it. There was another dear, uh, another postcard in there, postcard-like thing in here that just says, dear customer, we are pleased to enclose the material that you've requested. Thank you for your opportunity to, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be, in, uh, to be of service. Like, how amazing is that? Like, such an amazing company. Uh, honestly, like, I've always loved U.S. games, decks and stuff. But, like, this really, they really set the bar on this for me. Like, I was very impressed with that. So, here is my card, making my deck complete. And after I had called Amazon and told them that the deck was not full, that is missing a card, they refunded me money. And then I had the option of returning it so they could throw it in the garbage or just keeping it. And I couldn't return it to throw it in the garbage. I was like, I just, I can't do that. Like, it breaks my heart. I don't know. It's wasteful. So this deck ended up costing me $15 and it is now complete. And I am super thankful and super appreciative to U.S. Games and Amazon and, you know, anybody else that had to step in and, and make this magic happen for me. I really appreciated it. Um, I have no idea how I'm going to use this deck in my practice. I feel like it's not a deck that you use as a typical tarot. I've yet to still figure out how this is going to fit in. Um, I'm not really drawn to it at this moment in time in this, in this part of the year. So I feel like maybe this is something that I'll have to set some time aside in the new year and figure out like how this is going to fit into my practice and what I'm going to do with it. But I'm super pumped that it's here. I'm glad that it didn't get thrown in the garbage. I'm so happy that I was able to make it complete again. And it just, it means the world to me. This deck has been around for a while. I'm sure all of you have seen it. It's probably all over everything. Um, but I don't know. I'm excited that it's here and I love it. It's amazing. It's got such a beautiful energy to it. So definitely pumped to set aside some time in the new year and figure out how I'm going to use this and what I'm going to do with it. And there's that awesome card that was missing. I'm so happy that it's back together. Like it just feels good, right? So this deck I got right in the end of November. Uh, and so it's now completed as of the end of December. <laughs> so I'm really excited about that. That makes me really happy. So there's my finally all put together Herb Crafters Tarot thanks to U.S. Games. Um, and then I'm not sure if I showed this or not. I might have already showed it, but I don't think I did. If I did, I'm sorry. I ended up going on a trip with my uh, mother and my niece, and we had a wonderful time. And it was right at the end of November, beginning of December. And while we were on that trip, I ended up grabbing this deck. 
it's i love crystal skulls i do meditations here all the time with indigo moon for people to come and meditate with their crystal skulls um to educate people about crystal skulls and how to use them and uh, what their purpose is for and all that different stuff and it's it's a it's a lot of fun it's tons of fun so when i saw this first of all i had never heard of it and i was like oh that's crazy cool um second it obviously just speaks to me because i have quite a beautiful family of crystal skulls there's a video on here of all my crystal skulls if you guys are interested in seeing that you have to just go and and go into my um profile and find it in there so when this came up i was like yeah like this is really cool like i'm really interested in that so i ended up grabbing it and it's really it's really cool it's all of the like popular well-known crystal skulls of the world and some of them are the like the ancient skulls some of them are other skulls of different you know different things different whatnots so i didn't realize that there was this many like well-known crystal skulls of the world i mean i know like you know einstein max uh sirius like the more popular ones right but i didn't realize there was so much so i ended up grabbing it loved it it's awesome it's not a it's not a it's not an oracle like all your other oracles it's not something that you can really you can't really use it in a reading in a way um and i'll explain why in a minute we'll get it i'll ch I'll show you the book in a minute it's kind of difficult to put into a reading like you wouldn't do a reading with this i think this is more just like if something happens to come up and you don't know how to utilize it or use it or um maybe more i know when i do my uh, crystal skull group here we all pull a card from this to see like what message needed to come through for us during the meditation uh, maybe pulling a card um, a synergy that's what it is synergy is well known too um, here's Einstein oh it's interesting synergy and Einstein are right after each other um, Shannara that's a pretty popular one as well too uh, I forget what I was saying Oh, maybe to meditate with. These are, are maybe good cards to meditate with or maybe just to see like what crystal skull comes forward for you in a situation, maybe a little bit of guidance. But like as far as sitting down and putting it in a reading, it's not Amar, really popular skull as well too. Um, it's not something that you can use. It's not like your typical ETs are going to. Um, it's, it's not your typical Oracle, right? So... And why I say that is because if you get into the book, you'll see. Like it tells you when it's been sculpted or what they've dated it as, um, where it's come from, the type of material it is, the chakras it corresponds with. Um, it tells you about the metaphysical properties of the crystal that it's carved out of. It tells you its size and weight, um, which is pretty interesting. I think that's really cool. It tells you a little bit about the story of them, how they were found, who has them, who's their guardian whatever and then according to the meditations that people have done with these whether it's their guardian whether it's somebody else it's the message that the skull had sent through for this deck right so and, and so just because i opened up to this page it's junior let's say um, he was sculpted in 1970 in Brazil. He is made from rock crystal or quartz, which um, resonates with all the chakras. Tells you about, I'm not going to go over all of it, but the uh, metaphysical properties of the crystals. He weighs 10 pounds. So that's a, that's a good weight for a skull. Um, we have had Junior since 1997. He has participated in many ceremonies, drumming sessions, meditations, and various other events each year. His guardians are Walter hodgden and nels uh Galrun. so they obviously take turns or maybe had to go together to purchase him right so they're both guardians so his message that junior wanted to put forth for this deck is 
The skull is the image of pure conscious, of wisdom stripped of all attachments, hatred, and ignorance. The crystal symbolizes light and clarity, a symbol of wisdom. Skulls help broaden our perspectives to see the interdependency of all things to increase our compassion for all sentient beings. So that's his message, but see how it would be kind of hard to interpret that into like a tarot card reading in a way, or I'm using it like you would maybe a typical oracle. Um, you can maybe find some information and things in there, right? You can obviously kind of retrofit that into something. But to me, like it's not, it's not one that I will use to, uh, to do tarot readings with. Like this is going to be like its complete own practice. Like, you know, um, the Mel, like the Mary L tarot is like the, um, soul cards are like the portals of presence are like, it's kind of just going to do its own thing for me, but it's really cool. And I love seeing all like the different skulls. And like I said, I had no idea this was, there was this many. So really quite an interesting deck. I was, I, I'm glad I picked it up. Okay, so the next one that showed up, I believe, um, is the Pre-Raphaelite Tarot. Um, been on my list, never got around to getting it until recently. I did not know that it is a replica of the Jack-O-Lantern Tarot, or I should say the Jack-O-Lantern Tarot is a replica of this. Uh, I had no idea, but I really enjoy this deck. I love the backs. Absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Love Los Garbeos, their newer designs and cardstock and all of that stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm really down with it. I'm really enjoying it. Um, so the funny thing about this tarot is I actually was going to return it because I had the jack-o'-lantern tarot and I was like, well, it's like, the exact same thing just minus the halloween aspect right so for the most part there is a little bit of difference and i was just kind of like i don't think i'm going to like i don't think i need it so i was going to return it um but then i ended up just doing a couple readings with it and it is so beautiful when they're all laid out together in a reading or a spread they just come alive and they're just, sorry, I just had to move my light bar. I, it, the first half of this video is going to maybe be a little shady. Um, but when I put them out together in a spread or in a reading, they were just so gorgeous together. I, and it changed my mind. They looked so beautiful and just gorgeous. And I was like, all right, I'm going to keep you. And that was it done deal <laughs> decided to keep it uh and i've and i've been enjoying it and i've used it and right now like the edmund du lock is kind of holding tight on my nightstand but i do want to switch that one out for maybe this one um i did for christmas purchase myself the john bauer so now kind of like my little collection is finished i have I have the Rackham Tarot. I have the Edmund Dulop. I now have the John Bauer. The John Bauer was supposed to be here uh, before Christmas, but I don't know. Amazon's got something weird going on right now, and none of its packages are being shipped correctly. So even though it was supposed to be showing up here the day before Christmas Eve, it has still not arrived. It has some weird message saying that it's got lost in the weather at which there's been no weather and it's coming between me and Toronto, which is only a four hour distance and there's been no weather. So I have no idea what Amazon's issue is, but they're having a hard time delivering things right now. So the John Bauer is on its way here. I had to reorder it and 
the same thing was happening where it wasn't showing up. So I actually went in to cancel it. And then next thing you know, it's like, oh, you can't, you can't cancel your Amazon package. And then within 10 minutes, it's like, it's with Perlator. So apparently now Perlator has picked it up. So I'm hoping that they have their stuff together and they're able to get it here because I was really looking forward to completing my little collection and have the John Bauer here. So that is on its way. It's going to show up at some point. Who knows? It might be my last deck of 2023. And it is Mercury in retrograde, so it doesn't surprise me that everything's getting all ridiculous. So definitely liking this deck. Um, funny thing about this deck, I'm just going to spend a couple more minutes on it if I can find her. There is a figure. There's two figures in this deck. And her. Okay. If any of you have seen Vikings, the TV show Vikings, does this not look like the Viking queen that Ragnar cheats on, uh, like, uh, what's her name? Legatha? Not Lyatha? Legatha? Oh, I can't remember her name. You know who I'm talking about the whiny queen that ends up giving birth to the majority of his sons. This looks exactly like her. And every time I see this card, I immediately think of her. So really strange. And I, and that's kind of one of the other reasons why I thought about returning it because she's not, not one of my favorite characters <laughs> in Vikings. So she, this looks exactly like her in a, as a drawing. This one right here and she shows up throughout this deck in a few other spots. If you've seen True Blood, she looks like the vampire that made Bill Compton. She looks exactly like his maker. And every time I look at this card, that's all I see is her. There's another one in here that looks way more like, that one is pretty close, but there's another one. And like they use kind of the same character so there's that chick that looks like the Viking chick again. Here she is again. That could maybe even be her again. Kind of looks like her. There's another image that looks like her again. Let me see if I can find the other one. There's an image of her again. <laughs> this death card kills me. It's kind of the one of the, this was kind of like when I saw this death card, I was like, okay, maybe I should keep this because that's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Um, here she is again. Where is she? There she is again. The Viking, the Viking queen. There she is again. <laughs> right here that chick looks like Bill Compton's maker she's in here where there's a picture of her I, I maybe I passed it it looks so much like her that I had to pause for a minute and I was like are you kidding me like she looks exactly like Bill Compton's maker that should be the last card It's in here somewhere, and of course I can't find it, but it looks exactly like her. And I'm just like, every time I look at it, I think of True Blood, Bill Compton's maker. So a little bit of a strange twist on this deck, but still really enjoying its readings. Really enjoy what it looks like when it's spread out in a spread. It's so beautiful, especially if you like leave some of the cards like if you lay them face down, like it's so beautiful. They just flow. I don't know. I was really taken with the way that they looked all together. Just beautiful. There's just something about it that really floated my boat. So and if I didn't lay them all out in a spread, this probably would have went back just because I felt like it's kind of energy repeating itself. Like I, but it's not. So luckily it made itself clear to me and I was like, all right, like I'm keeping it. So 
in its little box, little tuck box it goes, and it's staying. So I'm hoping that I will be working with this one pretty soon. Um, I wanted to work with it for December. It's in, uh, I made a video. I don't know if I ended up posting it or not to tell you the truth, because I don't know if it ended up turning out. Um, but it was in my December pick of decks that I wanted to work with because it's so regal and elegant and jewel tones. It was just, it's beautiful. So this was kind of on my uh, list to work with for December. Haven't really gotten the opportunity to yet, but December's not quite done yet. So, um, and like I've already decided anything that didn't really get worked with in December, I'm going to slide into January and try to work with in January. So if it doesn't uh, pan out for December, I'm going to be working with it in January because it's just too beautiful. All right. And then the next one that came in was the soul cards. I have the portal of presents, portals of presents, and I've had them for a while. And the funny thing about the soul cards is sometimes I would see them and they would speak to me and I was like, wow, I really need to get that. And then other times I was like, I don't need to get that. They don't, they're not, they're not talking to me. Like I'm not interested in them. So I ended up deciding to just finally get them. And they have not left my bedside. They're on my nightstand since they've gotten here. I pull one every night to just kind of give me, like I ask for a card to represent the energy of the next day. And they've been doing a fantastic job. I really enjoy doing my personal little readings and dives with them. Their color palettes are beautiful. They match a lot of my decks. Um, right now, I'm using them alongside the Edmund Duloc, and they're very beautiful. They both just ended up on my nightstand together. And the one day I was like, they have kind of similar color palettes. I'm like, maybe I should use them together. And I did. And then that's just the way it's been now for, I don't know, I think we're going on six weeks now with that going on and happening. So I definitely am really really enjoying using them and working with them they're a little like staticky um, because they're such a high gloss like they're very glossy and it kind of feels sometimes like the laminates lifting on the edges but I don't know I'm glad that it's here I'm really enjoying it I think they're really cool I love using like just just tapping in like with your intuition, right? And just not having any words, not having any direction, not having any anything, right? Just using your own intuition and tapping into the energy that is coming forward with this card, right? And yeah, it's great. It's been a great use of um, my third eye. I'm really enjoying that exercise and exercising it and seeing like what's going to happen, what's coming forward. And they're just so beautiful and pleasant. And some of them aren't, some of them obviously, you know, can kind of hit a, a, you know, a trigger in you or whatnot, but I'm really enjoying them immensely. The box is kind of annoying. I'm not really a fan of the box. So I have to find something else to maybe put them in. But honestly, they should just sit out because like I'm using them every single night. So maybe I'll just leave them sitting out. I'm not really sure. Maybe wrap them in a scarf. I haven't really decided exactly what I'm going to do with them. I, I didn't think they were going to sit out the way that they are. But yeah, I don't know. I find this, this is kind of annoying. I wish there was kind of like something here to hold this down maybe even. Because they have fallen out of this box a couple times and hit the floor. And I'm just kind of like, hey. Like, that's my number one cause of damage is my cards hitting my floors. And I don't know how and why, but it always happens. Okay, so the next deck that came in or I brought in is the Dreams of Gaia Tarot, but the Pocket Edition. I, this is another one of those decks that I've been really back and forth on. I wasn't 100% sure if I wanted it. And then I saw this little pocket edition and it spoke to me. Um, I didn't like 
I wasn't really a fan of the borders on the big the big deck and how glossy it was. And I think that's kind of what was like throwing me off with them. So this one's been here. It's beautiful. The way that these cards are and like the coating that's on them, it makes the cards feel like they're like the images are like, I don't know how to explain it. It's beautiful cardstock, a beautiful print job. And they just gives like life to these images. There's just something about the uh, coating that they put on it. That's just fantastic. So I've done a little bit of work with it. I don't really think that it's a deck that um, I'm going to use at this time of the year. I might be wrong. Um, I want to do my my Wheel of the Year spread every January. Like most people, I do my you know 12 card pull. Thinking I'm going to use this. It's kind of speaking to me to use it that way. So I might. I tend to use my smaller decks to do like the big, big, big spreads. So this is something that I'm hoping. I don't know. I might use it. I might not. I haven't decided. I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to use this as my, my uh, Wheel of the Year spread my cards the deck that i'm going to use if not it's going to end up being i don't know one of my other smaller decks one of my pocket decks and i don't have times i only have a couple but i want to work with this one and i think that's like what, what the majority of it is is i just i want to work with it so i'm going to find a way to do that and with the tarot like with the year the wheel spread being prime time for it I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to do this one. Pretty sure we use it for it. But man, I don't know. These cards are strong images. There's a lot going on here. Um, I ended up downloading the full book. I found a PDF on it. So I ended up downloading the full book for it because the little book's pretty good for a mini book, but it just doesn't go into depth of the cards the same way the big book did on the bigger card. Um, or the bigger deck, sorry. So I ended up downloading a PDF off of the internet. So I now have the big book on my phone so I can refer to it and kind of get to know these cards better and build a better relationship with them. So yeah, I don't know. It's really beautiful artwork though. Not necessarily my cup of tea. Like it's not necessarily my exact style, but I don't know. I'm I'm really enjoying it so far. Like from the few times that I have pulled it, they're such beautiful cards. And like I said, the way that they've created this, the way they've made it look, it's beautiful. Like Blue Angel did a really good job with this one. So I'm I'm really looking forward to figuring out how to fit that into my system. Okay, and I have two more decks to look at. And this one was. This was my um, husband's Christmas present to me. And this is an amazing Marseille. I, I learned off of Marseille Trumps. Just the Trumps. It was just a small deck of just the Marseille Trumps. And that's kind of how I started my whole adventure into tarot many, many, many years ago. So... When he asked me what I wanted for Christmas, I was like, I want a Marseille because I have no Marseille in my collections other than that little tiny, tiny Trump deck that I learned on a million trillion years ago. So when I saw this one, it was so unique and different that I was like, yeah, I, I totally, totally need to do this and get this one. So I was really, really, I mean, I do like, I shouldn't say I don't have Marseilles because I do. I have two, but they're like museum quality style. Actually, I have one. Well, maybe that other one is considered a Marseille. I don't know. I have two very similar Marseille style decks, but they are, um, they are museum quality. So I don't use them. I don't really play with them. I don't really do much with them. So this one is one that I just, I wanted to have to actually use and to do things with. 
this is just such a great reader. It's so straightforward. It's to the point. I love it. The cardstock is freaking phenomenal. Like, it's like such high quality linen. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying a lot about it. It is my first deck from the Artisan Tarot, and it is definitely not going to be my last. Uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful little company. Really, really enjoying it. I watch their free online uh, Marseille uh, course about the majors, and I loved it. I thought it was so cool. I would love to take the main course, but it's just out of my price range. I'm not willing to spend 180 American <laughs> to kind of like go over things that I probably already know, you know, just as a refresher. But I don't know. Who knows? Maybe one day I will. Because I did really enjoy their little demo about the majors. It was done very, very well. And I love that they're like tea stained. And I love that the backs of the cards have staining on them. Like they just, they did not. The attention to detail is exquisite on, on this deck. And... I love it. I'm so happy it's here. It shuffles like a dream. It's got a little bit of humor to it a little bit. But I just love how straightforward Marseilles are. They're just crystal clear, straightforward, to the point. There is no clouding. There is no sitting and being like, Do you, it could mean this, or maybe it means this, or maybe it means that. They are so straightforward and so to the point and just so direct. So, definitely glad it's here. My favorite Christmas present by far. It's just great. So, that was the Tarot. Sorry, I didn't even say what its name was. The Tarot uh, does Invigatories. Invigatories. I don't know. My husband would kill me. He's fluent in French. So, for me, when I say it, he's like, no, you say it like this. And I'm not obviously saying it like I mean I know French because they teach it in grade school and high school and stuff right so I know my French but I am not as fluent as he is that's for sure but yeah so great deck absolutely love it well worth and the thing is, is it's not even I was just gonna say it's well worth the money but it's like not even it's not even that expensive for what it is like it's a very affordable deck in my opinion so I love it. It's great. And the backs, like, love the traditional backs. So when I got this for Christmas, I ended up getting an email sent to me. And I'm sure everybody, I hope people took advantage of this, where you got offered a free deck of trumps and all you had to pay was the shipping. So this showed up today. It would have been here Christmas Eve, but it was literally sitting at a post office and just didn't get slid into my mailbox or I would have had it. Um, this is just the Trumps. It's a Marseille once again. Um, I forget which one it is. I should have grabbed this, the title cover. Oh, I think it says right here. Yeah. So it's the Jean Noble Marseille. And so the Artisan Tarot was offering this. I don't know if they still are, but they but they were. This was completely free. Other than you just had to pay shipping. So maybe it wasn't completely free. Maybe it was like 10 bucks or something like that. I can't remember. But whatever it was, it was so affordable that I was like, uh yeah, I'm gonna do that. And I grabbed it and jumped all over it. It's a little pocket deck, once again, and I don't know, like, I keep ending up with these little pocket decks, and I don't really, like I said, I don't really use pocket decks, other than for, like, huge spreads, like I said, like the Wheel of the Year and stuff like that, but I wasn't going to turn down a, f a free Marseille, so, pretty much free Marseille, and I end up grabbing it, and it's here, and I thought it was so funny, because, like I said, when I began learning tarot, Many, 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 many years ago, I learned from just Trumps, Marseille Trumps. And then all of a sudden, this showed up. It's like we're right on the new year. 
It's in a couple days. And I ended up with a Marseille just trumps. So I thought that that was, I don't know, there was something in that for me. And I was kind of like, that's really quite cool. So I went from having not really any Marseilles that I could work with to two Marseilles in December. One being a full deck, one being trumps. So very interesting. But that was, you know, this one kind of came out about because of this one. So yeah. I was excited about that. And like I said, that just arrived today. So I haven't even, I kind of shuffled it, kind of looked at it, checked out the images. Um, very interesting artwork. Like most Marseilles are, right? So it's, I don't know, I was really excited to get it and I'm looking forward to, so it's kind of like, and, I, and that's where I was kind of going with the uh, Dreams of Gaia is it's like, do I use the Dreams of Gaia or do I use the Marseille Trumps that just showed up to do my Wheel of the Year spread? I haven't really quite decided. And like, I've got, like, I've got a really cute Lenormand that I could use. I've got, um... I'm trying to think what other pocket decks I have. I have the Aquarian Tarot in a pocket deck and in a full size. Typically, traditionally, I use the Aquarian Tarot. And that's always been my Wheel of the Year uh, deck that I use. However, I now have the Dreams of Gaia that I might possibly use. I have the Marseille Trumps that I might possibly use. I don't know. I have to decide what I'm going to do. And I have a lot of decisions to make. So I'll have to figure that all out. Now on to crystals. So these are kind of some of the crystals that I've um, I got in December. I only bought a couple, um, but they're big mama jambas. So I'll start with the biggest. No, I'm going to start with the one that's the closest to me. And it is this beautiful, beautiful piece of celestite. <sighs> celestite is so gorgeous. Let me see. I have a little, I have a flashlight here. It is so blue, so blue. This is kind of washing it out. I think the color is kind of better this way, to tell you the truth. There's like a phantom happening in this one right here. It is so beautiful. I don't have, like this is my only piece of Celestite. And it was funny because I've had, I've brought in Celestite several times into the shop, but none of them ever really resonated with me. Um, they're beautiful, don't get me wrong, but they just, they didn't feel like they were mine. So as I was purchasing crystals to bring into the shop, this one kind of popped up and I was like, wow, I think I found my piece and this is it. And it's here and it's beautiful and I love it. And I love that there's like a phantom happening in this big, huge, beautiful piece of crystal right there. You can kind of see it when I hold it a different way. It's very interesting. Oh, yeah, it's so beautiful. So here's my, here's my Celestite that I got for December for myself. And I'm going to put it right here because she's a beaut. Oh, and see, and like, look at the mess that they always make. Oh. This is why I do crystal. I don't do crystals typically up here because I'm going to have to take this whole thing off now and dust it. But it's okay because we're looking at them and they're gorgeous. Next, I bought myself a huge, and I mean huge and heavy, uh, rainbow fluorite. And this might be too bright. It's kind of bright. But there's like blues in it. There's like, look at that purple. There's some green. This is all a beautiful like seafoam green in here. I don't think I'm really helping much with this flashlight to tell you the truth. It's kind of a little too bright for the camera. But look at these. And like that's the thing. Like it's got the blues. It's got the greens. It's got the purples. Um, you see it's so thick. Like even this doesn't help it any. It's got rainbows in it. They're up here. There's obviously some down here. You can kind of see them shimmering a little bit. But the camera's just not going to pick it up. Let me see if I move my overhead. That kind of helps a little bit. There's some beautiful blue up here. I'm 
like beautiful green on the back and like there's just so many rainbows rainbow it's well it's rainbow fluoride right so it makes sense that there's a lot of rainbows like that big rainbow right here it's not showing as rainbows it's showing more as just like shimmer but like that is a huge honking rainbow right there and then it's got some of this matrix still in it that I want to kind of dig out to tell you the truth because it's just like a polished mud so I might end up busting it out I don't know we'll see because then you'll have like all these like cool little nooks and crannies and caves that you know and there's rainbows deep down inside here oh so pretty this is a huge rainbow all on this edge and I just love that it's got like the deep blue in it it's not a very common color to find in uh, fluorite. This is all rainbows here. They're just not picking up, unfortunately. I can't get over this whole one side. is all rainbows. It's so pretty. There's one deep down inside here, and there's like almost like a little window to see into it. It's just not picking up. Yeah, so... This is what I ended up getting myself. And it's so heavy. It's huge. It's so heavy. It's killing my arms. Well, yeah. So, oh, like, look at the rainbow all over it. That's so unfortunate you guys can't see it. It's so pretty. But, yeah. So, I ended up getting this one here. And, like, blue seemed to be my theme of December, which is funny because blue is not, like, one of the colors that I enjoy. Not really a blue person. So the other piece I got was a very rare piece of blue fluorite. And this is it right here. So it's very in the very raw form, right? See the, the matrix, it's still on its matrix. It's very rare uh, form of blue fluorite. This is like... I don't, I don't want to say museum quality, so it's not museum quality, but it's pretty rare. And this one right here has this beautiful rainbow in it. It's shimmering a little bit, but it, the camera's not going to pick it up. It's got a little bit of a sparkle to it, just a little bit of a sparkle. I wish it was a little bit more druzy than what it is. I wish it was a little bit more sparkly, but that's okay because it's beautiful blue fluorite, and it's not very common. This is not a common crystal that you come across, so... This one's sparkly right there. That one's pretty sparkly. It's got some good sparkle to it. Can you see it? Yeah, it's got some good sparkle. So yeah, those were the three pieces that I brought in. They're very unique, very different, very specific. I was looking for very specific things. Um, fluorite, I was looking for a very specific tower. I wanted the three colors. I wanted the combination. I wanted rainbows. Um, it was very specific what I was looking for for this. So when I found this, I was like, there it is. That's perfect. Very specific on my Celestite. Um, like I said, I've turned down tons of pieces. And then I found this one and I was like, there it is. And then this right here was very specific as well too. Um, because I wanted that, that more of that rare piece, right? So these all get put away because they're all, you know, quite beautiful pieces and very large pieces and then I have my nice piece of uh, my nice slice of of agate right here which is hanging out on the table with us so yeah that's kind of where my December went that's what I brought in that's what I was working with um that's what I've been enjoying I'm still working with the Mary L Tarot where I'm pulling a card you know every couple of days or as things happen and just really getting into that book and really getting to understand and know that deck so I'm still working with Mary L so yeah, hopefully everybody had a lovely Christmas and lovely holidays. And I hope that you guys, you know, stayed safe. And I know in our family, we had a little bit of uh, strange uh, occurrences that were kind of scary happen. So hopefully everybody stayed safe there. I don't know that this mercury energy has been a little, a little nasty. Um, it keeps, you know, jumping up and popping up into little nasty pockets of things. So 
it'll be gone halfway through January. It'll be gone and everything will be back to normal. So please don't freak out if your new year doesn't seem so great. It's just Mercury. Once Mercury goes away, it should simmer down and everything should be fine, hopefully. Here's hoping for a better year than 2023 because 2023 was a disaster. So hopefully you enjoyed your holidays. Stay safe, especially for New Year's. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to one another. And I'll see you guys on the next video in 2024. Bye and thank you. Oh, and I should say, if you've enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all that awesome stuff. And I'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.